Man, oh man. So, uh, you know, we do our, our countdown at the the beginning of these post games, the, the countdown montage that uh, you guys watch. And it's every a, a bunch of Knicks counting down from 24 to one that wore those jersey numbers. And I couldn't help but notice two things. One, the number 18, Alec Burks, is probably not the player anybody wants to see in their countdowns at the moment, or at least in countdowns, countdowns until he's no longer part of this team. And the other thing, Sean with a W, uh, a lot of guys there I wish were available for the Knicks tonight. Uh, but unfortunately, a shorthanded Knicks team comes up short against the uh, New Orleans Pelicans. 115 to 92 is the final. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the KFS Post Game Show. Uh, filling in for Jonathan Macri tonight, you got me, Andrew Claudio, a.k.a. GMAC. And then uh, Mr. Kaman U Spurs over there, uh, Sean with a W joins me on this Tuesday night. Um, Scale of 1 to 10, how actually upset are you by this game, Sean? You're muted, by the way. One. One. Like, happiness equals reality, min- reality minus expectations. Like, I said, and I, I was telling you at the end of the playback, um, when we were playing the Lakers off the nine game, you know, we just won nine in a row. We are playing the Lakers at the Garden. And Jonathan asked me how, what did I think was going to happen? What do I think about tonight? And I said to him, I don't know how long we can keep this up with seven and a half players. And that game was, I believe, either the Super Bowl bye week or the day before championship. It was championship Sunday, the day before. Um, And today and today is February 27th. So what can I expect when we are depending on Boyan Bogdanovich for 29 minutes in a game in 2024? So, like, I'm not upset. Yeah. Oh, of course, I would like to win the game, but like, I might get upset. I'm gonna start throwing things. I might just start saying like, "Oh, maybe we shouldn't." Like, I'm not gonna react. And well, maybe we shouldn't have made this trade and that trade. And that's not how life works. Hindsight's 2020. None of you saw this coming. So, getting upset is. I mean, you can choose to get upset if you want. Um, good people of the of Nick's Film School. Uh, I choose not to. I don't think I'm upset. I think to your point about how much longer can we keep doing this? I this this point I've been trying to drive home on the on the pregames and just in in my analysis in general of how this season has gone is that the third version of the Knicks that we're currently mired in, like they were what was it 17 and 14 the day of the OG and Anobi trade? Then they go 14 and 2 and we're wondering just how high this ceiling could go during the month of January. Then, you know, Randall dislocates his shoulder and Anobi's got some loose bone spurs in his elbow. And since they've been gone, they're six and seven. They're not they're not four and nine. They're not three and ten. They're six and seven. They're five hundred team without either of them playing with with one of those games uh, was the day of the trade deadline when they had like three healthy guys. Jalen Brunson has missed a couple of these games. There's the day after the day before. The game before the the All Star break against Orlando, when mm-hmm. like Jacob Toppin saw serious minutes in that game, and no Boyan, no Devo, no iHeart. And there's the game before that where the Houston Rockets benefited from one of the worst calls of the season. So, like, I'm trying to add context to like just how bad is it. I do, I do personally feel aware, not not aware, like an actual wear and tear that. You know, the the when will we be healthy again is starting to to drain me. And so I can understand if people are now, was this worth it? Like we're we're now all of this, all this that we experienced during January. Did we peak too early? And my response to that is like tonight I I actually saw the injury report when Ian Bagley around two o'clock today put out that like Jalen Brunson neck spasms and I heart his Achilles injury. I was like, oh, it's a second night of a back-to-back. This is the new reality that we're in. Because we've raised our ceiling and because like every other team does this, like, oh, two injuries suddenly popped up. We're going to rest two of our important postseason pieces. I thought today was a bit of a punt by the team 
and yet they still played valiantly. We saw them down one at the half. And, you know, what better effort could you get when you're playing, you know, with really seven playable guys with a, with an attempt to win? So um, I know it's frustrating. I know what the standings look like. Orlando won today. Miami's playing against Portland tonight. Um, you know, Philly did lose, but, you know, Cleveland won. The Milwaukee won. So I, I do understand where the nervousness that what this season was in January, we may never see it again. I'm just going to ask that we, we, we hold on just a little longer because that ceiling still was created and they haven't been ruled out for the season yet, Julius and OG. And from all the reports, when Shams had a report today that would he, it, it's literally a reevaluation. And if he's good, he's on the court the next day. And then who knows? Like he could be back on the, in a game days later. So that's really like the general thought I have for this, Sean. Do you have, do you have any thought about how this game transpired <laughs> and as far as like how the Knicks played and in, in this loss to the Pelicans? No, I mean, you know, a Tom Thibodeau coach team is going to play hard. Mm-hmm. Um, ball was moving around first quarter plays were being made. Um, and like, we even said it, like they're down two at the half. Okay. Now a part of me thought to the back of my mind, um, I should go look to see what the uh, Pelicans' second half line is um, because I felt like unless somebody, unless Vivo or B- Bogey goes off, you know, points-wise, just getting hot, like they're probably not going to win this game. It's just a matter of they cover or not, right? So, I mean, you know, like, okay, okay, takeaways from this game. Uh, Jericho Sims. You have Is heater going. On? Hold on. Do you have a, a oh no, kitchen that's my uh, going off. <laughs> no, no but my my wife is boiling some tea for. Okay, son. hopefully uh, that goes away. Soon. You're good. You're good. It goes away soon. Um, uh-huh. Okay, but um, I think I hear her walking toward the kitchen. There we go. Um, there we go. Uh, that was the next season being put on 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 too long, and I potentially you know might burn the house down. I guess reduced background noise didn't work. Um, yeah. <laughs> Continue, Sean. Uh, yeah, takeaways from this game. Jericho Sims, I love you. You have to, like, look at the basket when you got the ball and you're in within six feet. Like, teams will – I mean, not that you get that much playing time as it is, but you, like – I said it in the playback. Like, this will get you out the league because it's not like you're DeAndre Jordan, you know. You know. Um, um, DJ said during the playback, um, Dante DiVincenzo getting off 17 threes is like a feat that should not be overlooked. Like, and it's not like he's just standing in the corner waiting for passes. Like, he's working to get those th- he's working to get those threes off. Uh, I love Deuce McBride. He, as Benji says, he is a wing in a point guard's body. Uh, there was that sequence where he's just trying to get his, his spot to get his little midi. He just couldn't get there because, every you know, the, the Pelicans are like. Listen, why why would we leave these guys in the corner? We're just gonna pack everything, keep everything in front of us. Um I said Devo valiant effort. Boyan looked like he struggled a little bit to start. He started one of five, but he ended up with 14 points after three quarters. Um, like I said, if he we if we got like the Boyan game that we've been looking for, maybe they have a chance. And listen, Tom Tibbon made a bet. Like, all right, listen, they have Zion Williamson. We're gonna pack the paint, we're gonna take away the middle. Um, and we're going to let them see if they can hit corner threes all night and they hit corner threes all night. So (laughs) again, like, what are you going to do? And if you want to litigate like, well, they shouldn't have made this trade. Well, that's not how life works. Like you can't say, Oh, like if the reason why they shouldn't have made a trade traded one of the young players, it was not because, Oh, well, what if we're down three starters for about a month? Like no one sees that coming. So we move, literally. We move to Thursday night. We're on, we're it, on to Golden State. I don't even know if it necessarily, like, litigation of the trade. Like, I know we have comments coming with people that are that are upset, right? But, like, just as simple as, like, if a random game that Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle were missing, like, are we going into that game confident? You know, the, the Knicks were so depleted tonight that... It's tough for me to even analyze. Like, I was, I was like, you kept it close for a half, and then, like, the third quarter started to slip away. And, 
Like I saw Benji tweeted this out. I was thinking it. Like, do you should you go back to Bogey earlier? And then you look mm. at Bogey comes in with four minutes left in the sec in the third, and plays like eight minutes straight in the fourth. And during the last his last second to last possession, Knicks bring the ball up and Devo's in one corner, Bogey's in the other, and Devo's got like, he's standing upright and he's you know waiting for the play. He's figuring out which which where he's gonna cut and where he's gonna go on this one, and Bogey's got. Two hands on two knees just trying to catch his breath because he's now being asked to do things. And DJ said this on the playback, being asked to do things on defense that he was not being asked to do in Detroit. They were not asking him to play any hint of winning basketball in that organization for most of this season and last season. And now he's thrust into a shorthanded Knicks situation where he's got to play 30 minutes, as you said. This is just like... This is the reality of the situation. We are in a holding pattern and they're six and seven. They're not four and nine in this stretch. Now I get what the standings look like. Let's hope there's some good news on the horizon. And look, this game, as far as like, they kept it close for a half. And then like the gravity of the Pelicans having two all-stars kind of reared its ugly head. Cause anytime the Knicks let them go one-on-one, Brandon Ingram got what he wanted, hit some tough shots. The fourth quarter, they were just letting Zion take over, and he hit some sh- some tough shots, got his points. And anytime you double or pack the paint, as Sean said, Herb Jones is open for a three. Something called a Matt Ryan is in the corner hitting a three. Like uh, the, the Pelicans did what they needed to do tonight. They had, I believe, they had 15 threes in this game, 14 threes in this game. So I, you went in playing at a disadvantage, and I. The new reality that we all exist in is that this team has April, May aspirations, which means there's going to be games like this. Now, they don't have another back-to-back until the last week of the season, which is LA Fitness Fitness Week, but every other team does this. Literally, all last year, we got a couple of wins because, oh, suddenly they're, this other team's best player is not playing, you know, and mm-hmm. we're like, oh, well, we play every game. Every regular season games matter, right? Well, now they know who their head coach is and they're not going to approve him, the, the someone to play for this guy if they don't think he, they can play in a Tom Thibodeau rotation. And I'll say this, Sean, and then we'll get to the Super Chats. Mm-hmm. Tom Thibodeau, guy, that, Tiger that never changes his stripes, right? Mm-hmm. I noticed some growth from the man. I'm going to make this case. There was some growth from Tom Thibodeau tonight. In the past... Josh Hart's playing the entire second half. Steven Chenzel's Chenzel's playing the entire second half, right? And you saw in the third quarter, Hart plays the first nine minutes, sits the final three, comes back for the fourth. That's that's a sub. That's a that's an actual break. That's not a mm-hmm. hockey. That's a hockey shift. You you're on eight. You take a breather, and then you're back on. Steven Chenzel plays, I believe, the whole third quarter. If maybe he checked out at the end of the third, maybe a minute or so left for Alec Burks. Sits the first four minutes of the fourth quarter. And then he comes back in with about eight and change left. That's growth. Like, DiVincenzo, on a, we're, we're, in the past, you'd be like, how are you playing these guys 40 and 45 minutes? Hart got to 40. DiVincenzo, 37. It's probably what he plays in a competitive game during the regular season when everybody's healthy. So, mm-hmm. look, there there is an Alex Burke, Burke's problem at the moment, and part of it is that he just has to play better. I also noticed who did Devo come back in for when he came in with those eight minutes left. Came in for Alec Burks. Deuce got the nod down the stretch. I don't know if that's any confidence that that's the deal going forward. But what were we afraid of before the game? Point Burks Except was going to rear Burks. its ugly head. <laughs> that our PTSD was that that was going to come back. Deuce McBride gets a start. So these are small silver linings. All things considered, they're what I'm going to try and take away from this game. That the the two guys that will probably excuse me the three three or four guys that matter come playoff time leave standing and yes. you know we we move as you said so now is that growth you know when you realize that you have to eat your vegetables to get strong or is that growth your parents saying you're not getting up from the table <laughs> until you eat your vegetables. And I, I say that because during the last episode of Casual Friday, r- remember that show? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> XJ had said, uh, you know, this is an organizational 
decision that needs to be made. And, you know, it's easy to let the head coach have these rotate, have these, have these extended rotations when you are, you were a team that was 27 and 39, 27 and whatever, 27 and 39, whatever we were at the end of that, uh, that, that the first COVID season, you know, the bubble year and, you're just trying to establish a culture. You're just trying to establish a baseline level of competence. But we are we're past that now. Like now is not just about being confident. It's about, like you said, we have April and May and June to worry about. Some people yeah. like so if we're gonna do that, we can't, we can't, we can't go, we can't go balls to the wall in, 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 in January and February. And I will tip my captain's organization and say, like, okay, you know something? If this is our head coach, this is our guy, fine. But uh, we know what he is and we know what he isn't, and we will manage him and we will put him in the best position to succeed long term. So here we are. Yeah, I agree. But this is, it seemed like something organizational has been decided, which yes. probably led to why we're all so frustrated tonight. I had to watch the version of the Knicks we saw tonight. Jalen Brunson doesn't play on Thursday. I'll have a little more worry in me. As of right now, I'm checking this up to an understanding that the future beyond this game needs to be prioritized. So absolutely. Um, so thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh let's get to the super chats. I am curious to see how this is gonna go. Um <laughs> <laughs> so someone sent in a super chat at three in the afternoon today, right around when I made the event. Uh, Nick's Fan Patrol, for the love of Ewing, does KFS have a Discord? Yes, it's available for all our Monroe, Ewing, and Mellow Tier patrons. Just sign up for P Patreon, um, and you get access to the Discord if you need. Uh, if you are a patron and you don't have access to it yet, they have a ton of fun chatting on a daily basis about NBA at large and, and whatnot. Uh, mm -hmm. Just DM the KFS pa in Patreon. Hit up the KFS uh, admin. And we'll add you right away. So thank you, Knicks Fan Patrol, for, for a super chat that had nothing to do with this Knicks game that we just saw. Uh, appreciate next you. up. Uh, yes. I appreciate you, Knicks Fan Patrol. I just want to say that if you're a part of the Discord, you can, you will, there are amazing chat, there are amazing conversations from our amazing patrons in there, including messages from Dom Cappuccini, who made a joke that Brunson was out, that Brunson will be out for weeks and that Hartenstein will be out for the year. Which, when you're just looking at a notification, you see that, and you almost <laughs> piss your pants. Yeah, that would change. And that I would change how I experience Discord yeah. day. So, Dom Cappuccino, I love you, but if you ever do that again, I will have you arrested and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. That's great. Oh man, the minor heart attack I would have had if that hit me the way it hit you. Apparently. Um, okay. Next up, Mythic Montes. I'm starting us off a lot lately. Burke's trade continues to make no sense. Not a point guard. Um, I mean, you're not wrong. I, I still think he was brought here just to be a boost of offense. And the way he was playing in Detroit over the final 20 games until he became a Nick was exactly the version that we needed him to be. Uh, look, he's, he is not playing well at all at the moment, offensively, defensively. He's hit a couple of shots here and there, but um. Yeah, I, it's I, Alec Burks has been bad. He's not a point guard. I don't think he needed to come here and be a point guard. I'm still holding out hope that there is a version of this team when Odin and Obi's back, where enough guys can bring the ball up and be fine in in that role. Josh Hart's your de facto point guard. Ananobi can be your de facto point guard. It's creators, not necessarily point guards, that you need in the ten minutes that Jalen Brunson doesn't play. Right. Um. You know, so that's that's where I stand on this. I, I, he is playing awful, by the way. Like that that fourth quarter, the reason this game extended to double digits and stayed there was because Tibbs was letting Devo rest and Alec Burks was on the floor. So, so I will. What I'll say to this is, if you say the Burks trade makes no sense because he stinks, well. The role that he's in is not the role. The role he's currently in is not the role that he was brought in for. And, you know, you, it's easy to say, you know, I don't want, you know, I don't care, whatever. But that's not why he's here. If you're saying that the Burks trade makes no sense because you won, because he's not a point guard. Well, 
one, we didn't trade a point guard to acquire him, and two, which point guard out there was realistically available? Like, Terry Rozier wanted to go to Miami. You want Kyle Lowry? Like, uh, you want uh, I, you want uh, oh, who's the guy? D'Angelo Russell? And yes, yeah. I had a D- Russell agenda that I was like slamming the table for, but like, listen, he's playing well now, but like, so I mean, who like the Burks trade was for this season and for next season? I, 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 if but Mithy Monty, I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of continuous soup, so. The Knicks were trying to have their cake and eat it too. I don't blame them because why would you give me cake and then tell me I can't eat it? So yeah, yeah. And look, the, the to be clear, the the bogey part of it is what's the continuous soup. Burks. Yes. It's why I'm 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 holding out hope that there's a world where Burks is like, if he's this bad a month from now and OG's mm-hmm. back, Deuce is getting his minutes because I like Deuce at the two more than I like Burks at the two. And if OG's back, we need as good a defensive second unit as possible. I also just want to point out, there's a stretch of this game in the second quarter where I thought Bogey was actually being used properly. He was next to Josh Hart and DiVincenzo and um, McBride and either, I think it was Precious at the five and it's like, oh, this is a team with like legitimate floor spacers and you can actually, like mm-hmm. this, again, it goes back to the second quarter against the Sixers too, where they ran a similar lineup and it's like, oh my gosh, like the whole point of why you got Bogey is is you're seeing it. The Burke side of this, he may just be like a scapegoat while we're trying to tread water here, um, which may be necessary because he's been playing poorly. I, I, I'm holding out hope that if he's this bad a month from now, that Deuce takes his spot. I'm holding out more hope that he's not playing this badly a month from now. So we'll we'll see what happens. That's where I am. Yeah, that's where I am. Like I don't think it's like I don't think he'll be playing that badly for that long for yeah. this long, especially when you know. We have, oh, I don't know, some of our starting front court back, which has been gone for <laughs> God knows how long. So context, You're, people, context. Can we just acknowledge that the, the point you just made, I think, is the should have been how we started tonight. So they were missing Jalen Brunson. That's one starter. They're missing OG Ananobi. That's a second starter. They were missing Julius Randle. That's a third starter. And then yes. whether you think Mitch is the starting center or Hartenstein's the starting center, they were missing two centers, like their their first and second center. So they're missing yes. five potential starters tonight. They're missing four rotation players. Right. Like, 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 like what are we gonna do? So like, thank I, you. I, Mithi, I know, Mithi Monty like, has another one, by the way. Pessimistic right okay. now, but playing is increasingly likely. Plenty of basketball still to play, guys. Hey, yeah, let's not do that. Like I know we want to act like all the teams behind us are the boogeymen, especially the team that plays on Biscayne Bay, right? Mm-hmm. But you know what? They got to play games too. They have to play tough teams too. So let's like let's play again. We've been doing this for like a month, and we're still in fourth. Yep. Right. They're and six and seven. Third. They're six and seven. They're not like they they've won games during this stretch. They're six and seven. Yes. So. Yeah. You know. Thank you, Mythic Monty. I appreciate the, the contribution. Thank you, Monty. Chris Carter, Alec Burks' is washed chicken. <laughs> hey, what am I going to say? <laughs> it's probably an accurate description of what he is right now. Thank you, Chris. I, I, I just, this is a hilarious comment. Thank you, you Chris. I appreciate that. Right, what am I supposed to say? Term, God. I'll say that there's a term for, uh, so when I say you're washed, that means you're done. There's a term before washed. I use it. It's called being fat Elvis because there was skinny Elvis and then there was fat Elvis and, El- and in Vegas still doing shows, still drawing people. And he wasn't what he used to be, but he was still Elvis. Alec Burks right now is fat Elvis. He's not washed, <laughs> but he is fat Elvis. So like, yeah. well, like I said, Elvis, Vegas Elvis, you know, to be, let me be, let me be, let me use better language. Vegas Elvis, you know, we could put on a good show mm-hmm. when he just walks back and forth or whatever. But if you want Elvis, you want Vegas Elvis to go on tour. No, 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 no. You're not getting a good show. That's where Alec Burks is right now. Or he's just washed chicken. That the Chris Carter freaking nailed it. I, we could sign off I'm right now. I'm use that. Wash chicken is a wash chicken. Thank you, Chris. All right, Russ Guberman. 
First of all, thank you for the contribution, sir. We appreciate you. Your, you, you sending this in. At what point do we question whether trading two durable young pieces for a more injury-prone older piece was wise, even if he has he is a ceiling raiser? So we're questioning the OG Ananobi trade. Got it. OG Ananobi is 26 years old. So we're talking, we're not talking older in the sense that this is the bogey trade. Um, this is OG Ananobi, who, as we saw in January, gave this team a ceiling that all of us were excited about. So if we're going back and relitigating this, you got to give back January too. Now, maybe you are like, okay, giving up January. And you'd rather have these two guys that went to Toronto and are nine and 16 since going to Toronto playing well, like Arches played great, but that team's going to be picking in the top seven in the NBA draft this year. Unless, unless uh, <laughs> they may make the play in, to be honest, because of how bad the bottom of the East is. But like, what we can't do, like, Russ, the point that we do this is if he misses playoff games. If we're at the point in April and OG Ananobi's missing playoff games because of how not durable he is, fine. But the shift in mentality that we all have to make that we haven't had the last three years is that, like, teams miss regular season games. Guys miss regular season games. Like, a lot of players do it. And if you're healthy for the playoffs, that's what matters. The Knicks are prioritizing the playoffs. It's why they told OG and Obi to go get the surgery now because we have aspirations in April and May and, as we said, potentially June. So that's where I'm at, Russ. I'm We're not there questioning that yet, especially – and, Russ, if you're questioning it now, be prepared when they give him a very big number in an extension – or I guess re-sign him to a very big number this offseason. What do you got, Sean? So you said during the playback that there are three – there are three versions of this of the season and during version one when we had those two durable young pieces and guess what i i maybe rush you were different but i remember all of us losing our shit when one of those durable young pieces was substituted for another durable young piece in a game against oklahoma city so to your point to your point andrew russ i'll tell you is like are you giving back january and being 14 and 2 because if you're if you if you say no, I can keep that. That doesn't happen without though. That doesn't happen without OG Ananobi, who again is 26 years old. Um, I actually funny thing is I, I I posted a poll on Twitter earlier today, and it was um, which roster move involving the kids are you most fearful the Knicks would regret? And it's trade Obi to San Dante got one percent, RJ and IQ for OG and Precious got eleven percent. 231 votes, by the way. So it's not like BS. Grimes for Brooks and Boyong, 32%. And I think there's some recency bias because we saw Alec Bur um, Grimes do his thing last night. But then again, he did that thing on a team that's 8 and 48. And then no regrets, we move 56%. So uh, at some point, like the young play, listen, I like the young players. I like OG. I like, I like RJ. I like IQ. But at some point, you kind of kind of you kind of gotta start pushing your chips into the middle of the table, and that's what this move is. And it is a it's a floor raiser and a ceiling raiser. But I get it. The ceiling he's not playing right now, and there are there are plenty of uh, discussions on the internet about how OG is not necessarily injury prone, just unlucky. Like for example, having needing your appendix removed is not because you're injury prone, right? But so I get the frustration. But I mean. You got to, you know, I mean, listen, man. it is what it is. Like, it is what it is. Look, I played 67 games last year. That'd be fine with me, you know? Like, I, 60 games a season is like what a, a normal rotation player plays these days. It's tough because we were used to Julius Randle playing like as much as like 75 plus. And again, RJ and Quick and all these guys playing in the 70s, but. Yeah, this is the shift that we're making. We are no longer a team that's just happy to have a fun regular season. This team has aspirations for for April and and beyond. So I'm I'm at the point where I I miss OG Ananobi. I'm not regretting that they traded for OG Ananobi. Russ, I hope we helped because I could, I could hear the agita in this comment. Thank you for the for the contribution. Uh, next up, Alex. Alex has had some fire lately, so. Uh, Alex says, send a message and release Burks tonight. 
Play the G Leaguers instead. I honestly don't care. I'm sick of his lack of effort and losing demeanor. I'm going to go to your next comment, Alex, because you say this and then you say this. Alex with another one. Thank you for the contribution. Thank you. I know Alex. he has a I know he has a hospital squad right now. Can debate how much of that is his fault uh, or his is his doing. But now on Tibbs to pull out a string of wins versus playoff teams that nobody has him getting. Spo just beat a healthy Sacramento. Okay. Spo had Bam out of bio. Spo had Jaime Hawkins Jr. Kevin Love is playing out of his mind right now. Like not comparable when you just asked them to play G Leaguers. <laughs> like, yeah. what are we doing, Alex? But then again, Spo goes to Publix and finds a cashier and gets 12 right. points a game out of him. Is, so, is and, the concession I need to the, make? Uh, is the concession I need to make? You're right. Tom Thibodeau's not Eric Spolstra. You know who else yeah. isn't? Anybody else in the league. He's the best coach in the sport. One of the greatest of all time. I could see that. Remember the first three games after they lost Ananobi? Do you remember that, Sean? They beat Charlotte, who's an unserious team. Fine. Yes. Then they played Utah, a team that a lot of people are, oh, this is a better team. They won that game. Yeah. Then Indiana mm -hmm. rolled in here, and like th that was a, an emotional victory. They got all three of those wins. They just beat a Philly team that beat Cleveland a couple nights ago. Like, I, I have to keep reiterating this point. Like, they're six and seven. Like, Tibbs actually has been pulling wins out of his ass lately. Now, to the playoff point of it all. These next two are going to be really tough, but the way that he's going to pull wins out of his ass is not by playing G leaguers. At least I don't think they are, Sean. Yeah, and I'm looking at so the, the next here the so the Knicks next few games are home for Golden State at Cleveland, Atlanta, Orlando, and then Philly, Philly, and then Port at Portland at Sacramento at Golden State at Denver. Uh, Atlanta's a playoff team, LOL. Um, Orlando is Orlando. And listen, I listen, I think there's a blessing in disguise that every time we play Orlando, we have between seven and eight NBA players, and they have never seen us fully healthy. So let them get their confidence up. Um, Golden State has been on serious. What are they? I think Golden State is ninth right now. Um, like Golden State's so been good though. They're they're eleven. They have been good. In their they, last fourteen. Yeah. Yes, they're eleven three in the last fourteen, and yet they are tenth. So oh, they're ninth, um, they're ninth. Well, tied with the Lakers, but percentage points. Yeah. I'm not like I'm, Golden yeah. State was under 500 three weeks ago. So I they have played better, which is the worry going into this. I'm not going to completely dismiss them. Also, to your point, also, like, go ahead. But this isn't the 2016 Warriors either. So exactly. That uh, version of the Warriors is they're beatable yeah. if the Knicks can get Brunson and Hartenstein back. Yes. And the Sixers are the, the Sixers and the Knicks are the Spider-Man meme right now. So. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. Okay, that's one, two, three, four. Uh, let's go through the, the Philly games. So that's one, two, three, four. That's six games. Would it shock you if they went three and three? What which, which makes them? Which makes them nine and ten? Which we'll be mad about it, but it's like, all right, you're you're nine and ten without you're five hundred team without Ananobi, which is probably what you are. We're also doing all of this saying OG Ananobi, right? Just ignoring yeah. the fact that we're missing a two-time All-NBA player, three-time All-Star. Like, they're missing another guy to add gravity. It's all part of the calculation. They they had some very unlucky injuries. The Ananobi bone spur, which I guess this is what we're going to have to live with, is an unlucky injury from him. And Julius Randle never misses game, fell prey to the Miami Heat and their evil ways. So, And I just like to say, for all those people that hoped and prayed, they're like, I just don't, I just want Julius Randle gone. Because I want to see what this team looks like about him. Yeah. Are you happy now? And I don't want, and do not tell me about this. Do not tell me about Obi Toppin. Don't tell me. Oh, God, that I, I was even going to. I was just going to add yeah. the caveat. Like the people that wanted Randall gone were like, I want to see what it looks like if you have, like, what the Ananobi without Randall looks like, which we're going to get a couple weeks of that. See what it looks like. Um, I think you need both. Like, I've, if you want any you type both. of. You want January to come back. You're going to need both. So Absolutely. thank you, Alex. He's got another one, but it's further down. So I'll, I'll wait to post that. Uh, Juanan can always count on you uh, with a contribution. Uh, at what point as fans do we learn to have patience and not be impulsive? We're not healthy and guys are in roles that they're not supposed to be in. Time to panic, right? LOL. 
fuck, man, we're going to be fine. <laughs> that's great. That's, to um, me, that's so, the common in night so far. Like, like, yeah, just you, we just can't go from one extreme to the other. It can't be the sky is falling or going to the chip every year. Like, I beg you, just have some nuance, apply some nuance and context. That's well, all. I got to be honest, Sean. When I saw the Bagley tweet today, I was like, oh, okay, we're going to have to do some some nervous management tonight on the pod because mm-hmm. I was I, – I don't want to say I thought they were going to lose tonight, but I thought they were going to lose tonight. Like when I saw they were going to be missing four starters and then whatever Mitch is not there, I just like you're not going to beat a team that's seventh in net rating mostly. And they played valiantly. You saw the – and a DJ made this point on the watch along. Like you see like what the team can be when those pieces are there. Like. Mm-hmm. The the Bogdanovich lineup that we all like. Imagine Hartenstein's your backup center, or Mitch is your backup center instead of Precious Achua or Jericho Sims. Instead of Alec Burks, OG and Anobi in that lineup with with the with with Bogdanovich, and you just have like four shooters with Josh, like three shooters with Josh Hart. Like, I, there's the, mm, I see it. Like I do see what they traded for and what it can be. Alec Burks is going to have to play better. Team's going to have to get healthy. So thank you, Juanan, for the contribution. Um, Greg B with an actual comment about the game. Thank you. This is a very generous contribution, by the way, Greg B. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Only problem with Tibbs, no matter who is in the lineup, the starters are playing deep into the third quarter. Doesn't sub until the four minute mark winning or losing too many games are close after the first half that the Knicks lose in that third quarter stretch. Go Knicks. There's that third quarter of doom, Sean. Um, the issue I have, oh, 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 the pushback I have, because I do like think Tibbs does stick with the starters sometimes too long. This was like a thing for the longest time, especially that 2022 season, right? Mm-hmm. The pushback I have specifically tonight, because I was thinking it, and I know like like Benji tweeted about it. I think a lot of Knicks fans were like, you can't play this lineup with Precious at the four and Jericho at the five. Like, There's just no space. They can't really run an offense. Like, So you probably wanted to bring Bogey back in, right? Bogey doesn't have like 12 straight minutes in him. He doesn't have a whole second half in him. So you were eventually going to have to, like, I think Tibbs was just like, I got to, I probably have 10 straight minutes. Maybe I could survive this, this stretch with, with, with the possession battle, like try to win the boards. And then when Bogey packs in, I'll go back to that lineup that got me back in the game in the second. And lo and behold, they're on seven. When this, 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 they came back, like, this game was within reach, and at a certain point, you run out of bodies. So, I, in general, Greg, I do like this is a concern of mine. Now, theme of the night, I'm kind of fine if he leaves the other starting lineup we used to have in at the, as long as possible because it was our best lineup with OG and Um, But to your point, like when we were all begging, like, okay, where's quickly? Like, get quickly in the game. Where's Josh Hart? Get that. Get that lineup where with those two in the game for either Devo or. Uh, uh, or RJ, like those days I was with you. I think to this game in specific, it's tough to fully crucify him because like, if you're going, if you're, if you're saying like, does these lineups have no spacing, the press is to chew a Josh Hart lineup has no spacing. The alternative is Alec Burks, like bogey at the four or Alec Burks and bogey. They, they went to that. They just went to it probably later than you wanted to. And for as long as bogey could, and I, I don't think anybody's opining for Alec Burks tonight. So um, did I nail all of that, Sean? Do you have any thoughts? Boyang Bodanovich is seven years and 355 days younger than me. <laughs> and I am 42 years old. Yeah. Like, you, in a perfect world, you can run him out, but you can't, like, Again, he is he is currently being asked to do a job that he was not brought here to do. Alec Burks is brought here to do a job he's not here to do. So I I'm with you, I'm with you, Andrew, that sometimes Tibbs, like he does ride his starters too long. We all remember when the starters played the entire third quarter in Houston. Mm-hmm. Uh, so to your point, growth. Um growth. Real, real quick, they got back in the game because of that third quarter. <laughs> that yeah. that specific Houston third quarter, they cut mm-hmm. like a double digit lead down to three. 
despite like this is a Tibbs thing. Like I, we we are acknowledging he does ride his starters too long sometimes. Yes, and the, and 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 one could say that that doing that it was cutting off your nose to spite your face because it's or it's it's I've won, but at what cost? You know. So his options. And listen, you're talking to two people who are not water carriers for Tom Thibodeau. Okay, right. we're not. But his options are his options are limited. Like what? It like. There's no like in during the playback, people are like, uh, I think it was Dirty Dancer was saying, like, you know, this is why you don't keep your 13, 14, 15 spots empty. It's like, well, who is available to put in there? And you know, Boogie Cousins, that, that's Nilla the Kino, that's the Alfred suggestions Dayton. we were getting. Yeah, yeah. Let's Lamar go get Odom? the USA team that just lost the cat to the Cuba, you know. Yeah, like you yeah. know, uh Kemba Walker, I, he scored 92 points the other day. <laughs> so, That'd be funny. That'd be funny. What are you gonna um, that would be hilarious. Yeah. Look, so. Greg, I acknowledge the concern. I do. I think in this game in particular, when I was thinking it, I had to do a double check, a double take of like, can Bogey come back in with like seven minutes in the third, play all those seven minutes, then be your floor spacer in the fourth? Now, the counter to that would go back to Russ's comment. Well, when we had quickly and you just brought him back in with five minutes left in the third and he just never came out the game again, you had younger players that could play longer minutes. Again, this is where the full complement of players that we saw in January is going to have to be the thing that we look ahead to. So um, yeah. thank you, Greg B for, for the super thank chat. You, Greg. Um, we got four more, Sean. Um, Tingus Pingus. Great name. Just gonna acknowledge it every time you send in a super chat. Tingus Pingus. Great name. Uh, AB and Bogey equal turnstiles on defense. Seeing Murphy and Herb Jones thrive makes me upset that Knicks lack young tenacity. Not young tenacity, wings, and an impactful draft pick. <sighs> Go ahead. So this okay. This reminds me, okay, I'm making a ton of playback references tonight. If you're mad, you should be a patron, and then you can <laughs> hear these references live. Uh, there was a, not last season, the se two seasons ago, uh, basically like the Herb Jones breakout, and then Bill Simmons had this thing like, who would you rather have in a playoff series? Oh, Herb Jones, RJ Barrett. And I don't know, I might want Herb Jones. And Ryan Rosillo was like, well, Bill, like, the reason you want a guy like Herb Jones is because he has to play next to guys that does – he has to play next to a guy like R.J. Barrett that will do the things that – if R.J. Barrett does, like, that, like score. Yeah, different roles. Gravity, yeah. draw defense. But, yeah, so, like, yes, Murphy and Herb Jones are thriving because they are playing next to Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram, right? So – well, I, I promise you, when we have Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle back, you will see Bogey thrive. AB, I, I I'm not I promising anything about Alec Burks at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Eh, I mean, it's more likely that Bogey. You will see everybody. It's like when it's like when the number one wide receiver on a team gets hurt. And your number two guy is a number one, but now he's being guarded by the number one corner. And it's harder for him because guess what? He's not a number one receiver. He doesn't beat cover. He's not a guy that you that you that you're like, oh, he's not a guy that defensive coordinators are are game planning for. But when the number one guy comes back, everyone moves to the right spot. The number two guy is that a number two guy, the slot guy goes back to the slot, and then things flow. So um again, we have to. This is a picture that was in progress, and unfortunately, the painter ran out of paint. He's going to, he, he's going to Home Depot to get more paint. When he comes back with more paint, the picture will be finished. I promise you. That was a great analogy there, Sean. Also, your Rosillo, because your voice is low, your voice is deep, your Rosillo sounds like you doing a, a Francesa voice. It was actually really funny, so that was well done. Um, yeah, I, I co-signed Sean here, Tingus Pingus. I... I don't think that like watching Herb Jones and, and Murphy look great was 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 awesome, right? Now I'd rather have OG Ananobi and Julius Randall back. Like they looked great. I'd rather have those two guys back and I'll I'll be fine. 
So thank you, Tingus. And, and to be fair, yes, they are absolute turnstiles on defense. But hopefully, mm-hmm. that will be that that will be uh, mitigated by forty eight minutes of proper rim protection and playing with guys who are really good on defense next to them. Yeah, yeah. Um, trying my best. We're all doing that tonight. Um, why the hell? Why the all out refusal to play two way guys? They can help lighten the minutes load. Third quarter was wild to wait 10 minutes to sub in bogey. So depleted. So let's let's take this all in stride. So we should be playing two-way guys to help load, lighten the minutes load. But you thought they waited too long to put bogey in, who probably needs a couple of two-way guys to help him lighten the minutes load. Also, like, the suggestion of bringing bogey in means you're annoyed that they lost. But guess what they were going to do if they started playing two-way guys? Probably not care about winning. And it's just lightening the minutes load so that way Josh and and DiVincenzo don't play as much. Like, try my best. You're trying your best. I agree. I I think we're all searching. Like the, 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 Honestly, the two things I... The, the two words I agree with the most out of this comment, so depleted. They're depleted right now. They're missing five starters. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, like... They so I actually had said in this during the playback drink, um, that you know, can't Jacob Toppin just stand in the corner for three minutes? You know, but if you looked at the way New Orleans was playing, like for example, they weren't paying any attention to Precious at all, at all. And and kudos and, and kudos to Precious when he got the ball and he's like, you know, foul on extended or on the or on the wing. He will dribble. He will dribble into the space that was being occupied to make them do something. So, like, that's Precious Achua, who is a legitimate NBA player. What do you think is going to happen when it's Dwayne Washington Jr. or Jacob Toppin? Or I was at the Mavericks game, and when Charlie Brown Jr. came in the game, he went right in the corner and stayed there, mm-hmm. and they paid absolutely no attention to him. Like, they, those are defensive tactics that teams do against. NBA guys like NBA like NBA teams leave Josh Hart wide the f open and he is not a two so like we're in a bad spot <laughs> like yeah. listen go 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 fi- go find a Grizzlies fan and talk to them about this and they'll tell you like they'll say the same things like what are we supposed to do yeah thank you Trimon uh, sincerely thank you for the the yeah. contribution I know we're reventing tonight but. And um, you're frustrated. I get it. Yeah. But like, you know, there's, the, 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 our hands are tied. Quite literally. Um, Alex, with one more. Uh, did the new NBA rules prevent the Knicks from saying JB and iHeart were rested? Uh, because we'd all understand if they're trying to keep them fresh. Thanks, KFS. Hey, Alex, I'm going to let you on a little secret. That's exactly what they were doing tonight. Like, quite literally, that's exactly what they were doing tonight. They're trying to keep them rested because they know their head coach is a madman that would have played Jalen Brunson and Isaiah Hardenstein a ton of minutes tonight because he wanted to win two games in a row. It's what we love about him. It's also what we're terrified of him when we're trying to win games later in the season. So, yes, the NBA has rules. The Knicks would have probably got fined tonight if they were just like load management is the reason. They may like Hardenstein is probably on a routine right now where he can't play back to backs. It's probably part of his uh, management of his injury. Um, I'm if I'll wait to see if Brunson plays on Thursday before I actually worry, I would be shocked if Brunson isn't playing Thursday. And if this wasn't just like, we're probably not going to have Hartenstein. We don't want to overuse Brunson tonight on the second night of a back to back. I think that's what this is. So, Operate with that thought, Alex, and then you can understand what the Knicks are trying to do. So, I, one, I don't think you get fined for resting players. I just think they're like, well, unless you're just like, blink, like it's not. But it's the it's the Heat game from way or Spurs game from way back when the actual yeah. first ever load management game we saw. Yes, a, when NBA they just send them. They the NBA on TNT game where the Miami Heat in 2012 it was. I think it was way back when, where the big three were going to play the Spurs, two title contenders, right? And Greg Popovich, the game was in South Beach, didn't send 
Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, and Tim Duncan to Miami. He's like, these guys are we played a ton of minutes lately. We're resting them for load management. And David Stearns find the Spurs being like, you have like the most you could find a team. What's funny mm-hmm. is the Spurs almost won that game. But like for a national TV game, David Stern was furious that you didn't even send your guys to the game and created a non-competitive uh, aspect. And since then has been the eternal debate of like, should you rest players during the regular season or is all that poppycock? I think it's somewhere in the middle where rest absolutely matters especially now with how fast the pace is and how many more jump shots are being taken. I also think guys want to play basketball and asking them to play basketball is not a bad thing. So with all that said, um, I would, I would say that I would say Jalen Brunson rested tonight, but they can't actually say that. And they said that he woke up with neck spasms. So. Well, I think they could have said that for tonight, but they would not have said it for the next game. Because I was going to ask you, what if would you, Andrew Claudio, sit Jalen Brunson Thursday against Golden State so that he is better rested for Sunday against Cleveland? But then I see that the Thursday game against the Golden State is a nationally televised game. So... Like I said, the Knicks probably made a decision. It's like, all right, we're going to play against Detroit, get this W, and we will flush the New Orleans game. Welcome mm-hmm. to welcome to the modern NBA. Sean just hit it. Every team does this. The Celtics did it all last year. Like, Jason Tatum, years younger, does this. Like, every team does this. We just haven't done we this never saw as it. the Knicks. Because we, didn't they, we didn't do it for the last couple of years because the regular season mattered, and now the postseason does. So thank you, Alex, for the contribution. A uh, couple more. A couple more came in. Uh, Bradley Rothman. The Knicks organization should get heat for waiting two weeks to have OG get surgery. Also, can we sign someone? Can we sign some real NBA players with the three open roster spots, considering how shorthanded we are? The, the, the dirty dancer uh, give you the money to put this Bradley. Thank you, Bradley, for the contribution. Let me start there because this is a generous donation. And you're frustrated. Um, I believe they only waited five days, right? They were like, they like, let's see if like rest gets this to go away. And then when they realized, like, it, oh no, it's a loose bone fragment, they he got the surgery, right? Like it wasn't that they waited two weeks to do it. It was just we found out about it after two mm-hmm. weeks because they wanted to maintain their leverage in trade negotiations up until the deadline. So. I actually think they operated pretty quick. We're just we're waiting until it comes back. As far as the the two way guy, I, I genuinely don't know what those three roster spots should be. They signed Taj Gibson. Like these are guys that are available for a reason at the moment. I would ask anybody, and again, Bradley Rothman and everyone else that who's venting. Thank you for the super chats. We understand we're here. This is a safe space. The question I always ask is, okay, um, signs of real NBA players. Who? I just don't know who. Like that's gonna matter. Like, 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 like. You have to give me names. Like, you can't just say sign some players. Who are they signing? Who? Like, I'm actually looking at like a list of NBA free agents right now, and the one name on here that I vaguely recognize is I don't even know is Kevin Porter Jr. And I don't even know how accurate that is if he's not on the roster. But like, who's a, like who's available? Armani Brooks, like. Who's available? Like, who is like, like, who is the dude that can come in and do a job that an NBA team already has not picked up or hasn't picked up? Like, I remember people saying, like, we should have got Bismack Biombo. I was like, well, Bismack Biombo probably didn't want to be like a, all right, I'll play now, but once these guys come back, I'm a four string center, you know? So, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's funny. This is exactly what Evan Fournier was is like, all right, you're a 13th guy. Like, it's why I'm like, it's tough to be like, the Knicks had nine guys available last night. You know, like they have, they're, they're maxed out with NBA players. Like, I don't know. I, it, it's tough to tell somebody, Hey, come play just in case we need you. I don't know who's agreeing to that. Like if you want the guys, them to go get three guys, that'll just be here for the, the hell of it. I'm not going to fault you for it, Bradley. Cause they had seven guys tonight. I, I don't know what, John Wall's available. John Wall's just scored. Kemba Walker, too. Just scored 100 points in a basketball game. Like, 
this is where we're at. Like, can we go get the a, a future podcaster or a current podcaster to come on? You know, so but Dirty Dancer's throwing random names at in the in the chat. Tony Bradley, Daniel House, Jalen Noel. Dirty Dancer, I got news for you. They're not winning tonight with any of those guys that you're mentioning. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that's, that's just not happening. Like you're you're saying, can we go get you to come play? Uh, backup minutes and like I actually thought they navigated the minutes fine tonight like you know so uh thank you Bradley for the contribution James Choi I feel like you're sp- the, the spirit of my father this too shall pass uh inhale exhale repeat Knicks fans that is the comment of the night yes this, this too shall pass shall pass I need to get to a month ago uh, a month from now when hopefully Ananobi's back, hopefully we're getting like we're we're ramping up for Mitch and and Julius to potentially come back, and we're just like oh this team looks like January again. That's really what I need. This team to look like January again. Make the Knicks January again. That's my that's my presidential slogan. All right, so we have two more, Sean, uh, from members of my family. So we'll start with Ryan Eggers. Shout out to you, cuz I don't really have any crazy hot takes. But give me this team at 100%, and I'm not scared of anybody. That is the energy we need, Ryan Eggers. We're not scared of anybody, including that team that plays at the Bang Bros Arena in South Florida. We're not afraid of anybody. There's only one team that I fear, and they play in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and they're depending on a seven foot three center who is, I don't want to say a ticking time bomb injury wise, but would it surprise you if he missed four weeks? Thank you, Ryan. That's the injury we need. Please tell your cousin to stop being afraid, and there's no boogeyman under his bed. Please, please, please. I know you're right, but as I've ever, but I know told any- you're. And I know as, you're being as yeah. I've told any therapist that I've ever spoken to. I need to get there myself. OK, <laughs> I need to get there in my emotions first before I can. I, I need to know that you're right, too. Like, I need to believe in it, too. And I'm just. I'm going to be afraid of the Miami Heat until they're eliminated. They could be the 10 seed. I'd be afraid of them. So when they're gone, I'll be like, hey, Sean, next year, you were right. The Miami Heat weren't to be feared this year until then. I'm just one one eye over my shoulder. That's all. Bang Bros Arena, huh? But that well, there was a uh, running. I know, that, I know that, I know that's what happened. Yeah, For those yeah. who don't know, the Miami Heat uh, played at they renamed their arena to something crypto that went under. It was FTX Arena. FTX Arena, and then FTX turned out to be a scam, like all of these fake money things. And when the naming rights were available. Bang Bros almost decided to buy the naming rights. Uh, and instead, uh, F- uh, Kaseya uh, took over. I don't know what Kaseya is, but they became the Kaseya Center. So I actually just was walking around the Kaseya Center the other day. And uh, literally last week, they have a nice, nice little market there where you can like have lunch on the water. And it was it was really nice. And uh, I wanted to my wife, I, I said this in our faculty chat. My wife wouldn't let me go urinate on the Kaseya Center. So <laughs> apologies, everybody. I tried, but she wanted to actually bring me home and I'd have to go, you know, bail me out first before I came back. So thank you, Ryan, for the contribution. Last one, as we were just talking about bang, bang bros, <laughs> Reverend Hiram Claudio. <laughs> uh, hi, Dad. <laughs> How are you, sir? Oh, Bible study was good tonight. Uh, <laughs> or is today prayer meeting? Or is that Wednesday? I don't know. Okay. It was a loss. In it was a loss. It is one loss with a banged up line. We move on at full strength. This team is still a team. Few want to play one game, let alone a whole series. Amen. That's all I got to say, Sean. Amen. Including the team that (laughs) played at the fake money arena. On Biscayne Boulevard. Yeah. I'm sorry. Listen, listen, man. Ever since ever since Charlie Ward got flipped over by PJ Brown, it's been after Miami Heat forever. And I am tired of these people too. 
on the internet who watch basketball for a living saying, oh, I'm not, a, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to count them out. I'm going to count them out. I'm That's old me. enough to remember. I'm That's old enough to remember me. the Miami Heat getting swept in the first round by the Milwaukee Bucks because that was all of three years ago. Please. And I, and I, and for me also personally is I can't stand the fact that people think that team is scary because they beat a team of Giannis when Giannis is healthy for five quarters. And, and, and Andrew says to me, well, they beat us. I was like, they wouldn't have gotten there. That's part of the equation, Sean. They hurt your best player and then they take your soul. Okay. All right. Part of it. Jason Tatum got hurt against the Celtics. What happened when we played right. the Heat this year? We lost our second best player or third best player. I don't know that OG Ananobi didn't get bone spurs because of the Heat. Maybe I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, what is XJ's thing? Facts don't care about your feelings. My feelings don't care about your facts, sir. I just want them to be eliminated and then we can go enjoy the rest of the playoffs. Can we just admit that I feel this way because of real basketball reasons, not because I root for the Yankees? Mensa. <laughs> no, you don't know what it's like to be afraid of a boogeyman. That's what it is. I There are real I basketball root, reasons. I agree, but. I root for Tottenham bleeping hotspur. Like, I know they that are means. the, they are, okay. They are the Jets of the, of the English Premier League. Oh, Okay. So that's why, I would, like, I root for Tottenham and the Knicks. Like, so what do you guys say? It's your winning mentality. I'm like, you mean winning mentality? I just watch my, I just watch my quarterback say, "Wow, look at all these running lanes in front of me. I'm not going to take them because people bully me on the internet and want me to say I'm not and say I'm not quarterback enough." So please, let's yeah, take but... all that out. <laughs> Go ahead. But what is? <laughs> You made the conference championship game. We don't we don't do that in in Mets Jets land. So, so. actually, you do. I've seen it. I've seen it twice. Right, but we're you're going back to two thousand nine to prove your point, <laughs> Sean. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole mentality that I'm talking about is that the Knicks are the Mets. The Knicks are the Jets. So yes, you do have that. The boogeyman. You never were afraid of the Patriots. The the Ravens got by the Patriots to get to the Super Bowl. I have the Braves that have just like been in my life forever. Now the Red Sox should be your boogeyman, but there's like 86 years of history that you know you can lean on to be like, oh no, they'll eventually show up again. So we've now well, gone off the rails to talk about baseball and football, but I'll let you. I'll go. say this real quick, Dirty Dance. I'm sorry. I'll say this real quick. Well, apparently the boogeyman wears number 15 and resides in Kansas City because apparently now he's Michael Jordan. And guess what? When we play him next year, I'm gonna punch him in the mouth again. It's a mentality. The mentality. Come on, I, believe. You I got, achieve. I got Mahomes in that. I got Mahomes in that. Sorry. See, and that believe comes from the fact that you're a Yankee fan. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this edition of the KMS Post Game Show. He's so frustrated. I love it. Welcome to life. You're you're currently on a pod with someone with extreme sports trust issues. So. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in to another edition of the KFS post game show. We do this after every game, win or lose or frustration. Uh, if you're listening, please leave a five star rating and a review. If you're watching, please like this video. Remember to subscribe, uh, Fred cats on the pod tomorrow. So that'll be hitting your airwaves or your YouTube channels early Thursday morning, as well as a pregame pod, which is already recorded to preview the next matchup against the golden state warriors. Sean, any final thoughts before we get out of here? This too shall pass. Take this game. In regards to this game, drink some prune juice and let that shit go. Amen, Sean. Amen. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. <laughs>